Hello, hello. I was about to make a video about another subject, but then I felt inspired of doing something else after watching this beautiful sermon online. Since, wait a second, so I'm having a lot of sound background. And I felt inspired, and you know, when you feel inspired, that's when you want to get the most out of it and just make the video because this is where the best way is going to come out, the words going to feel that it makes sense, perhaps. As I'm, I've been experiencing and as I'm observing also um, on TV, the beautiful sermons, um, whatever type of churches you are following or not, where you're going at, and it's been so long and such a long time that you've been going to churches, or you've been, you know, watching sermon, listening to them. I remember when I used to just go there. And although it's it's a great experience to really feel connected, to really, you know, spend quality time with your worshipping and with your um, studying of the word. Because, you know, for some people you would be studying the Bible. Um, in whatever language you're following it there's this type of shyness that we are feeling and although we are always encouraged to connect and always going forward and create relationships there's so many people right in this room in this church place that often we tend to be shy to move forward and actually ask and have questions because at the end of the day because there's so many people and it's a form of enterprise or corporation you don't have access to a one-on-one -on -one discussion with let's say the pastor or the director or anything else or any people that you find inspiring because you could love to have a discussion with the person and you don't really rarely reach out to make an appointment with the person because every time you hear this person you kind of feel like, wow, they know so much. Wow, I couldn't even imagine I could have a discussion with a person. What would I say? You know, oh, wow, I would be so shy to actually reach out and ask questions. They must be so busy. They must be changing lives right now. And we start to, to sit down in comfort into watching, into being the observer of what's happening on the stage and being comfortable in a little uh, chair among the crowd. And that sometimes can feed more into the shyness, more into this comfortability, and less into reaching out and actually stepping out of our comfort zone. So what I'm trying to say is that although the messages the lessons, the revelations are so great. No matter what you follow, no matter what the church, if it calls out to you, you're feeling emotional because it reaches out to you or not. If it doesn't touch your heart or really makes you connect with your heart and makes you trigger something in your heart because you're living exactly what you're living and you're understanding the word or the sermon or the way it's been said, you're not going to quite understand it when buddy it or actually practice the practice or the lesson because you haven't felt it in your in your heart so what i'm saying is that the best and i could even dare to say the only way to embody to actually integrate a lesson um a spiritual lesson a spiritual awakening a spiritual practice whatever it is you want to call it to be closer to god the creator is to actually feel it to actually sense and call you out inside of you in your soul because otherwise words are just words so you're hearing the person telling you in front of you in the stage what shall be done how we shall you know uh, surrender give more of us be a temple be a, a be a um your be loving and fellow with your sisters and brothers 
uh, deepen your relationships, serve humanity, all the things we know. It's like anything in life, right? We know how to lose weight. We know how to eat better. We know how to be more organized. We know how to be more successful. We know what to do to have a better lifestyle. And yet, we fail to do it. And it's the same context here where I put in a parallel where it we don't experience it personally and it doesn't reach out our heart. Let's say we freaking had an issue with our health or something happened in our life where we're like we have a breakthrough we want to change our lifestyle we want to change how we uh, manage our time or how we run our life if we don't have this breakthrough this true desire this curiosity this hunger for understanding on our own we will keep hearing the words from a distance we will keep hearing the word that they're telling us from a, deta a detached point of view because we're not feeling it, we're not sensing, sensing it, we're not experiencing it. And the only, the best way to grow, to practice the practice, is to experience it. We could go, and this is just my opinion here, obviously, this is a premise. We could go for 10 years, let's say, to a church, to a study Bible group, every week, every week. But if you don't feel it, you sense it, you actually relate to what's happening and you just listen to just listening because it's from a distance because you tell yourself by your act of presence, you will create new openings and new worlds. And I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm not. But if you're not making this inner work the rest of the time on a daily basis, this constant battle that we're working on, you will fail to reach higher things and you will fail to actually integrate the lesson that you're hearing, right? And that makes me realize that each one of us actually seek not only the presence of God and His love and condition, but actually to be seen. They want to be feel seen and heard. And so often I'm realizing and I'm sensing how people are shy to reach out for help, shy to actually be curious enough to ask questions and reach out for help to whatever they need, either it's, you know, working out or whatever. Although today the norm is more comfortable and more normalcy to actually have a fitness coach or having a business coach. But how many are actually asking to have a spiritual guide or coach in their lives? Because we don't know where to start. And we're going on in our lives to just follow and hearing those words, but we don't actually integrate them and we don't actually hear them really with our heart and soul. So we could hear forever words, but if we don't actually feel connected to it or experience it we will grow very slowly and it makes me realize too that when we're a big group a big crowd so there's there's kind of three environment of relationship you create to make yourself more more in discipleship more of a service of humanity, humanity and more in communion with God, there's the first one, which is the inner world, which is to be one and your relationship directly to God, the Trinity, the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit, the Christ, whatever we want to call it. Your own and personal private relationship where you don't have to hide anything, when you can be vulnerable, where you can be completely naked in the eyes of the Lord. Then you have the second environment, which is like a little bit bigger than that, which is your closest relationship, the one that you're creating a direct impact, the one that you're building a relationship with them, that you're building growth with them, where you, you're directly impacting them. And I'm, I'm just thinking here 12 or 13 because of the 12 disciples of Jesus in the Bible. He was able to create a close relationship and a discipleship with 12 of them. 
well, if we're counting the 13, the 13 wasn't there. So he, with him was 13, but let's say he was a teacher. So with 12 of them, so perhaps, and I'm just here guessing or just giving a, 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 a suggestion what if we were made to influence and be close to 12 people at a time? That the only way for us to have the time for ourselves with the one relationship direct with God and to actually have an influence directly with a smaller group would be the number 12. What if because we have to deal with ourselves in the same time, grow on ourselves, but also take this energy and share our knowledge and share and be enough ready and in, with our time management, with the timelines we're actually living in, we actually have time to deal and work and build a relationship with 12 people. And then the third bigger cycle, and I could even add a fourth, but the third bigger cycle would be exactly the church. Would be a church example, let's say a community of dozens of people, of even a hundred a bigger community where you can allow yourself to feel like you're not alone in what you're experiencing and feel that you know like you're part of a greater community that you're part of something and that you're making the time the quality time to be with the community because you have the same values that also is great because it elevates the spirit of the whole of the body of christ of the community it raises vibration so I'm all for that as well and then the fourth one if we would want to add a fourth one would be just in general just the whole consciousness whole humanity in general how everything is connected at the end of the day and all our consciousness are connected when we are vibrating in the same vibrations we are able to create miracles repercussions with little words little just little um, acts acts of love of kindness we can create such a great difference a positive difference in ran random strangers lives um, on, on an everyday basis right you cross paths with somebody you just speak you make a connection you create something different so that would be the fourth one but where really if we want to seek this inner transformation this growth this integration of teachings and revelations that you're having or lessons that you want to have or really transcend fears and um heal i f i find that it all starts with the two first environments which is the one that you have directly your direct relationship with god and they closer um the closer um environment which is the one with the 12 people let's say a small community let's say smaller group and this is why if you only go on the sunday sermons it's not going to be enough because you're still going to be stuck in this comfort zone where you're too shy to actually reach out and ask questions, actually be curious and actually desire and develop a relationship. Because if you want to be with everyone at once, you'll be with nobody. Because it's just not possible. We're just one individual. We're like human. <coughs> We're like physically limited in this uh, current world. So we cannot possibly imagine, oh yeah, I'm going to be creating a relationship with everyone and it's all going to be good. We won't be able to do it. So we have to like kind of focus back to one life at a time, one relationship at a time. And once those have reached, let's say, the highest potential or you feel like this person is ready to go on their own way or you're ready to go to your own way, then you have somebody else in your, in your close relationships to build on. And then again and again, I think it's important to create a closer community when it comes to your spiritual path. To actually enjoy it together, to actually be together and be free to ask the questions and be free to actually develop in your faith. Being part of a big community is not going to be enough. And only being with God is great. It's a great first step. That's 
another discussion for another time, you actually, you know, the best way to, to integrate, to learn, to actually experience life every day and, and to rise higher, to closer to God, I think it's to have and to develop and to, to cherish this relationship with Him. But He wants us also to love one another, right? To serve humanity. And I think the best way we can do is to do it in this closer community. To reach out. I invite you to reach out. If you send that somebody is curious, lost, wondering, needs help, reach out. Let them know that you're here. That you're here to make them feel heard and seen. Because it's not by staying comfortable in our seat among the crowd that we will change things. And then again, obviously, I am aware that each one of us has different purpose, different reason to be on earth. Like some are meant to be followers, some are meant to be leaders. But no matter what it is, you can still share what you experience and you can still maybe guide them or maybe even shed light to what you've experienced through sharing it with them. And in turn, when the time comes, when they seek it and ask it, they will feel it in their heart and their soul. And they will relate to some lessons they will hear from the, the bigger community when you go to the sermon. It is normal that we don't understand quite everything that the person in front of us is telling us. Because if we haven't experienced it yet, we won't understand it or feel it fully. Or integrate it fully. And we don't express ourselves the same way. Or think the same way as the person in front of us. So we relate even less. So when you practice. And you start explaining and expressing yourself. What you're experiencing in your own words. You are making sense more. And you are unlocking new ways of thinking in your higher consciousness. So you can integrate it more because now you understand it and you develop your creativity and your ability to communicate by expressing yourself, by exchanging, by building relationship with your closer one or a closer community of faith or spirituality. It's by practicing that we are going to grow better and higher to God. Not by just listening. We've got to experience it and practice it. So I hope, I hope I put my, I hope that my point across was clear. Just, just made me realize, you know, it's like the form is great, you know, gathering together as such a big crowd and big community, but the actuality of it, to actually feel and integrate what's being said. There's some closer groups of communicate of, of relationship that has to be done, that has to be built and developed in order for us to be propulsed in big higher heights. I think it's fun. I love you very much and I invite you, like I said, to go reach out, make people feel heard. Help them to be with them, to step out of the comfort zone. Fulfill their questions. Hear them, listen to them, accompany them, create relationships with people you think you could help. With always the help of God, always ask to be the vessel of His divine love. To be spoke through Him at all times, to stay humble to surrender all your expectations in the same time.